Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, today's passage comes from Numbers chapter 16, verses 1 through 15, and let's go ahead and read it together. Now Korah, the son of Ishar, son of Kohath, son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up against Moses with a number of people of Israel, chiefs of the congregation chosen from the assembly, well-known men. They assembled themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said to them, You have gone too far, for all in the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Why then do you exalt yourself above the assembly of the Lord? <clears throat> when Moses heard it, he fell on his face, and he said to Korah and all of his company, In the morning the Lord will show who he is and who is holy and will bring him near to him. The one whom he chooses, he will bring near to him. Do this. Take censers, Korah, and all of his company. Put fire in them and put incense on them before the Lord tomorrow. And the man whom the Lord chooses shall be the Holy One. You have gone too far, sons of Levi. And Moses said to Korah, Hear now, you sons of Levi. It is too small of a thing for you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near himself, to do service in the tabernacle of the Lord, and to stand before the congregation to minister to them, and he and that he has brought you near him, and all your brothers, the sons of Levi, with you? And would you seek the priesthood also? Therefore it is against the Lord that you and all your company have gathered together. What is Aaron that you grumble against him? And Moses sent to call Dathan and Ibram, the sons of Eliab, and they said, We will not come up. It is a small thing that you have brought us out of a land flowing with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, that you must also make yourself a prince over us. Moreover, you have not brought us into the land flowing with milk and honey, nor given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Will you put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. And Moses was very angry and said to the Lord, Do not respect their offering. I have not taken one donkey from them, and I have not harmed one of them. So this chapter begins uh, with a group of Levites, uh, Levite leaders, gathering together uh, to basically overthrow Moses and Aaron. Um, it was led by three men, Korah, Abiram and Dathan. Uh, but these guys, their responsibility uh, was to carry and care for most of the holy things of the tabernacle. So if you kind of look at it, it's a very important job. Uh, they were kind of like elders, uh, per se. Um, it's most likely that Korah, in the midst of all of this, um, that he wanted some sort of power position, um, some sort of high position as Moses did. Um, we look at this and obviously God appointed Moses to lead, you know, God's people out of Egypt and into the promised land. Um, but Korah, in front of a bunch of people, uh, around 250 men, uh, he was making basically a public accusation, you know, trying to find a way to blame Moses, uh, trying to find a way to kick him out of power. Um, and he did present this in front of an audience, hoping that people would follow him. Uh, so he was very clever on, you know, the way he was trying to gain uh, what he wanted uh, for himself. I think the roots of his plot, you can sense jealousy and you can sense uh, kind of like a bitterness towards Moses. Uh, because it's like, oh, well, why did God call Moses? But God didn't call me. But we're all holy people, so why can't God use everybody? Um, you can see envy towards Moses, uh, for being a leader towards the people of God. And I think, I think Korah didn't really appreciate his calling. Uh, I don't think he re appreciated his responsibility or his job as a member of God's people under the rule of Moses. Now see, Moses was called out of Egypt or Moses was used to call God's people out of Egypt, but it wasn't by Moses' own desires or 
his own selfishness or anything, but it was from God. It was a direct command from God to save his nation. So we see a few moments later, Moses bowed down, bows down to Korah um, in humbleness, you know. And I think in this moment, Moses is trying to get Korah to understand that his position as somebody who um, takes care of the tabernacle and all of holy, all of the holy things, uh, it's a very honorable position. Uh, but Korah wasn't having it. So Moses then gets furious and then he says, okay, well, it is what it is. Let's see what God does the next morning. So Moses spends some time in prayer and um, we'll go over what God does tomorrow to the people who basically aren't aren't appreciating what God is trying to, is trying to give them. Uh, what I learned from this passage is a couple things. Uh, God has a reason for all of us to serve in a position uh, that we may like, that we may not like, uh, no matter how big or small uh, the this position of service we're in. Uh, it matters. Uh, what you may think is worthless is actually beneficial and it is worthy, uh, it is honorable, and it overall helps the bigger picture. I like to think it of as like puzzle pieces. You know, each puzzle has a different shape. Each puzzle piece fits differently, you know, in a specific position. Um, and I feel like that's how we are in the Lord's kingdom and even in the church. You know, all of us have different roles in the church, whether we serve in a kitchen, whether we, you know, we say hello and we greet members coming in or, you know, we're working on slides or we're teaching or helping out in Bible study or even preaching. We're all called um, to different positions to help the overall body. Another thing I feel like I learn is um, the fact that you're in that position. I think it's good to not complain or grumble um, because God has placed you there and for a specific reason. I can't help but to think and look back at the Israelites as they come out of Egypt. And, you know, I look at all these passages and I can't help but to think like they have been grumbling since the very beginning, you know, since, since, since the waters parted, you know, well, where is food? How long are we going to be here? And they just keep going around and around and around and basically just wandering in the desert. And so, you know, I kind of think to myself, well, I wonder what would have happened if they weren't like this. Would that, you know, 40 years, would that have been four hours or four days or 40 days? And so it makes me think, you know, I think no matter what season you are in life, appreciate and, and know that the position God has put you in, uh, you are there for a reason. Uh, so let's serve the kingdom and serve the Lord uh, because it is an honorable task um, and let's not complain and let's serve without hesitation uh, and serve humbly. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and Lord, we just thank you for uh, giving us the opportunities to serve and giving us the opportunities to uh, just come before you um, in a position of gratitude. Uh, Lord, let us not be envious or jealous of others' positions, uh, but let us be thankful and let us be uh, humble with where we are and where you have placed us uh, because overall it helps the bigger picture. Uh, so Lord, would you continue to be with us? Uh, would you strengthen us through our days as we serve? I pray all these things in your holy precious name. Amen. Thank you.